we're back at Miami Porsche. And last time we came here, they wouldn't sell us parts for the GT3. They want only certified body shops to work on them. But we're about to find out what parts they will sell us. Fingers crossed. When I saw Adam LZ's old Porsche GT3 show up at Copart, I knew it was my only opportunity to own one. It was an invitation only. And even though it was over 4,000 miles away from home, I still managed to make it happen. Won it? <laughs> but getting the parts to fix it was not something I thought about. Oh! Oh my god! Secondhand parts are impossible to come by. Yeah. And Porsche in the US won't sell you structural parts unless you're a registered repairer. So I had to buy structural parts that I needed from UK Porsche and take them on as luggage on my last flight over to the US. But bringing parts like airbags on a plane is not the best idea. So I've got no choice but to try again at Miami Porsche. It's looking better to an extent. <laughs> we've got all the front tub on yesterday, got all the rivets in, bonded on, we've done some work to the A-pillar and now it's starting all the suspension components and everything from now on. So That's yeah. the tub you bought from the US, from the UK? Yes. Yeah, so and the tub was used or was it brand new? Brand new. So they sell it to you over there without... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It seems even Chris from Champion Porsche was shocked that the UK could sell us structural parts, but the US couldn't. But now I'm just waiting to find out whether they would sell us airbags. But after a small wait, it seems we got the all clear on it. Just needed Hannah to pay for it. I've got all the money. <laughs> <laughs> we have secured not only some parts, but also airbags. They can't sell you structural parts, but they can sell you airbags. So what sense does that make? But there's one mistake that I make later in the video that could see us taking a second trip down here. And being that we've spent a small fortune here, it seemed wrong not to ask the question. Oh, can we see the GT3 RS? Wow. The GT3 RS. The next model up from the GT3. And this one was the first in the US. So when someone crashes this, just let me know. <laughs> so this sign on the box here means that it contains a kind of explosive device, which obviously means Taking it on a plane would not be the best idea. And the explosive devices which are in all of these boxes are of course airbags, which is what we need to finally finish doing the interior. We're just missing a few more airbags, like the curtain airbags which sat up there, one knee airbag, and of course, the steering wheel airbag. As well as the steering wheel airbag, we needed the steering wheel airbag wiring loom. That's because the old one melted to the old airbag when it deployed because they get so hot. And we're hoping as well that this new wiring loom will stop the horn from being constantly on. <laughs> but we won't find whether that works until we get the battery connected and try and start it again. So this fitment looks the weirdest thing because you can move around this airbag like that, which I've never remembered you could do but everything's all in place and it feels like it should work and that's how it is but i just don't remember them being that movable but there's no way you could fix that to be any better because it only has two fixing points each side which push in so i'm saying that's done but we won't find out until the battery's connected next airbag to go in is the curtain airbag these are usually hidden above the headliner and it's the same in the porsche they're bolted to the rear quarter and then it's only a bunch of non-reusable clips to clip it into the roof. And whilst I was doing that, my dad started prepping the front tub ready for paint. It's um, so exciting. Even though the Porsche only had damage to the right hand side of the car, all of the airbag deployed in the accident, which I couldn't imagine how noisy and how scary that would have been. You can even see on Adam's hand here, it looks like the airbags actually burnt it. So as much as they are in the car for safety, they also can cause injury as well. I'm just finishing up on the final curtain airbag and there is one last airbag ready to go in, which is the knee airbag, which is mounted, well, right below your knees. 
So when the airbags deploy in a car, the seat belts tend to lock out because it pulls you back into the seat. So make sure you're in the right position when the airbag blows in your face. You don't want to be this close when the airbag blows. To make the seatbelt pull tight, it uses like an explosive device and when that blows, you have to get it either reset or buy a new one and unfortunately on this 992, we we're going to have to buy new ones but from Porsche, it's extortionate. But I think I've got lucky here because I managed to find a set of seatbelts in the same colour on eBay which was still expensive at $1,500 but with one issue, they came out of a Carrera 4S which means the seatbelts have a slightly different part number. But I was willing to take the risk to see if these worked. The Carrera uses the same chassis as the GT3, so I can't see why not. The only difference being that the 4S has four seats and the GT3 has only two. I forgot how light these were. Oh, and another difference, the GT3 has the carbon bucket seats, whereas the Carrera just has the regular comfort seats. But they still seem to be working. We've got new seat belts in. Get in. And the best part about it, we've got some spare seat belts which should have been for the rear. So we could sell these to somebody that needs rear seat belts in yellow for a 992, which I can imagine is going to be so many people. Okay, this is all prepped, ready for paint, but we've got to get this thing outside so we can paint it. And obviously there's no front subframe, suspension components, or wheels on it. So we're gonna get it on skates with the back wheels and sort of wheelbarrow it out at the minute. <laughs> Hopefully it goes well. So Jack just finished off the final welds to the front tub and that leaves it pretty much all ready for paint. But there's a few final things that we need to do to it before we apply the first coat. We're out. So where each panel joins to another panel on the Porsche and on most cars, you can see this seam sealer, which is over the top of that, protecting the two panels. But where we're fitted the front tub, you can see all the metal is exposed. So first thing we need to get is the etching primer. This is gonna protect it from any corrosion. Jack applied a layer of that, and then it's time for the masking up. This is gonna provide him a nice straight line to get the seam sealer perfect. Because last time I tried doing the seam sealer, it didn't end too well. And that's why I've passed it over to Jack for this one. He runs a line of it along the top and then paints it in using his paintbrush. And with help from the masking tape, it should leave us a nice straight line. Oh, look at that. And how satisfying is that? It almost looks OEM. In fact, it probably looks better than the OEM seam sealer. But there's one last thing we need to do to finish the job, and that is paint it. The reason why we didn't spray this whilst it was off is because if we painted it, we'd then have to file it all down to put the panel bond and the rivets in and everything like that. So it's on, we've done it now. Again, we're letting Jack tackle this one. He got the exact paint code of ultraviolet mixed at the paint shop, and now we're just spraying it all over the front tub. When the car leaves the factory, it only has a base coat on this front tub, so the paint wasn't too great to start with, but now it looks absolutely incredible, especially with the new seam sealer. It's the best looking front tub in the world, I'd say. It's looking good though. Look at that. It's paint to sample. Purple. Don't crush it. <laughs> All painted up now. Now it's literally the case of bolting everything back together as well as the new parts that we brought from the UK. Let's do it. Once we have all this assembled, I doubt you'd ever know that this car has been in an accident. And the only way you would have known it was, was either by viewing these videos or checking it out using Car Vertical. So now it's time for the strength test. Did it work? <laughs> As you can see by my dad's face, he's delighted. <laughs>
<laughs> Great news. All you need is a registration or VIN number and Car Vertical works in over 20 different countries. It can check whether the car's had any mileage fraud, whether it's been recorded as stolen, whether it's previously been in an accident, or whether there's any outstanding finance on it. The report gives you a massive breakdown of the full history of the car. And what's even better than that, if the car was ever auctioned off at a car crash auction website, it's likely it will show you the pictures from it. So to check your car out, a friend's car, or a car that you're potentially about to buy, click the link in the description box below and use code MATT to get yourself a nice bit of discount. Cheers, car vertical. So on the back of this crash bar are the horns. If we fitted that airbag correctly and we've got it all working right, then these horns shouldn't be on when we start the car. <laughs> Else, <laughs> these are going to be screaming. I guess we won't find that out until we connect the battery up later in the video and try and start it. But now finally, the Porsche is starting to look like a Porsche again. The front cooler is on and so is the crash bar. Next up, it's the radiators. This is the left hand side radiator with aircon radiator and fan on the back. And this is the right hand side one. Well, was the right hand side one, which again, ripped half the tub out with it as well. And when you order a new one from Porsche, they give you all of this, but all in sections. So my dad's gonna build this up whilst I put that one, which is already built up on. Seems like the easier option, I think. Thank you for sunshine. Oh, yeah. It's on. We could have made a expensive mistake. Well, I could have made an expensive mistake. Radiators are all on now and we can't put the cooling in just yet because the hoses aren't connected to anything and the rest of the hoses are on this front subframe. And the front subframe has got all these hoses on here but this has got damage to it right here. Where the bolt ripped out the tub, it also ripped the front subframe. From Porsche, the price was... It was about $1,200. Which was pretty expensive. We managed to find a second-hand one for $418.50, which a big saving. That should be here soon, then we could get the rest of that on. But that's not the mistake. This is the mistake. This is the battery, and it's a lithium-ion battery, which are crazy expensive and before we left america the first time this battery worked but we left it discharged for so long and now it's got absolutely zero charge in it like at nothing completely nothing and if we can't revive this i dread to think how expensive it is so we're just going to leave it over on charge overnight check back with you in the morning we'll see if it works we want to start the car and see if it starts up if it doesn't I dread to think how much this is going to be. This one mistake could cost thousands, but I guess we won't know whether it gets any charge until we leave it overnight. A night has passed and we're about to see whether the battery has any charge. Fingers crossed. Else we're going to ring Porsche and find out how much one of these batteries actually is. <laughs> Matt's just dodging parts. <laughs> wow, how can you just die like that? 0.0. So, dead. Hello, I'm wondering if you could give me a price and availability on a battery for a 992GT3. I've got the VIN number here if you need it. So, full price after taxes 28.71 with 48 cents. Okay, okay, no problem. Um, what, what we're going to try and do is get ours working and if we can't then we're going to give you a call back and um yeah so because no, no, it's, qu it's quite an expensive battery two thousand eight hundred dollars for one battery Let's hope and all it does is start the car <laughs> <laughs> let's hope we can get ours working that eh? is <laughs> so my battery was completely dead and buying a new one wasn't even in the equation so we've got to figure a way of kicking my one back into life. 
the battery chargers weren't charging my battery because it wasn't registering any volts at all. So Freddy came up with the idea to put jumper leads from a spare battery onto my battery and then put the charging cables onto my battery, tricking the charger to think that it had some voltage so it would start charging my battery. I just hope this worked. So now this should be charging that battery uh, at like 40 amps. I don't know if that's going to work. We're, we're going to see. Actually, we can see if, it, if it's holding a charge right now. If I turn it off and turn it on, it should give me a uh, charge readout. 13. .3 no volts. way! Yeah. No way did he just... <laughs> yeah, so... That's insane! <laughs> so it just needed a shock? Yeah, so... Yeah. No way! Yeah, so... No way! Yeah, we're good. What? Well, we have... There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Get the life out of it. <laughs> That's okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. <laughs> I only got slightly, I might need to change my pants. Seat's not bolted in, so I might fall back. Clutch down. Oh, out. Ooh. Power. The brake, uh, brake mic pressurized with the ABS. Thing. Well, the good news is the horn's not on, and we've got the airbag in. I'm gonna test it. Okay. Prepare. <laughs> Is the horn connected? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the re <laughs> there's an issue with the horn. <laughs> so the, the horn did work. Okay, here we go. Whoa. There we go. Do we get a horn now? No horn. It runs. There's a lot of lights on the dash, <laughs> but we'll get to that. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. So now it's time for the strength test. Did it work? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to take out your voice over. I'm just going to put it <laughs> <laughs> It looks as if it has yeah. worked. <laughs> it's just purely professional. Like a drug that